No, 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 no. I can't believe it. I, I just can't believe it. How did this happen? Oh my God. Oh no, 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 no. I just can't believe it. I, what did, how did that happen? I just don't know. How did that happen? I just, no. As I lick my wounds, there's going to be a few retractions on previous videos on the brake systems so that you can get it right. I know I didn't, but we're going to get it right together. Stay tuned. Well, it's not like I totally misinterpreted all of the pieces and parts. I did do my research, but I just didn't know what parts were what because I didn't have a schematic and trying to figure out a air system without a schematic and how it's supposed to be set up is about near impossible. So I'm so glad for folks that have left comments and that chime in and let me know because you know what, it's just me out here working on this and sometimes I don't know either. This is kind of like a little bit out of my wheelhouse. So it's very nice to have other folks come on here and, and give me suggestions and give me help. I so much appreciate it. One of them being Ron. Ron has helped me out so much. He's made a couple videos for me. It's, he's just been a fantastic aid. I'm gonna leave a link in the description of where you can find his videos and also his channel. All right? Let's just see if all the parts are in there. This should be a one-way check valve. Yes! The little rubber part is in there and the spring is in there. That's a good one. That's a one-way check valve. And a T, just like I need. <laughs> Score! Okay, well, here's the reasoning behind what I'm about ready to do here. How do you turn a supply line into a, a control line? All of the same thing, a supply and a service line. How do you do that? Well, really, that's how a parking brake works. Once you apply air to it, which is the supply, it also acts as a service line too, because it tells the parking brake or the um, brake canister to apply pressure against the spring, which is of course holding the brakes um, on when there's no air pressure. So in essence, parking brake is a supply line and it is a service line. So that's what I'm gonna do to this side here is this, because this is gonna be supply air. Supply air is gonna come in here. This one is gonna go right back to, I'm gonna show you. Now then, that supply line, which is coming directly off the truck, in order to make it into the uh, service line for the parking brakes, it has to go to here or to here, but right to here is where it needs to go. So, I need to switch, this is a 3 8 line and the other coming in is a half inch. So I'll be switching this out um, and making this a half inch or something, I don't know, converting it. The biggest mistake that I made in the other video previously was that the bottom relay, the brake relay, was the controller for the parking brake and it is not. The top is actually <laughs> the controller for the parking brake. That was the major problem is, is uh, why a lot of this stuff just did not work. 
and I got a, a partial pass, but um, also a partial failure. So let's get this thing rewired and I'll walk you through it after I'm done. How about that? I am 90% done with everything. Let's say 95% done. And I'm gonna show you guys, this is what I did. Okay, so we have the supply line that's coming in from the truck. All right, it goes to the T fitting and the one-way check valve. So while it is filling the tank, it also goes all the way back to the relay. Okay, that uh, upper relay, and that supplies air pressure directly to the brakes, the parking brakes. So it should actually release the parking brakes. That's what we were talking about earlier, about the supply line also being the control or the service line. Okay, so while it is filling the tank, it sends air pressure back to the brakes, releasing the parking brakes. So the middle line out of the tank, which goes to the um, pressurize the tire, just like a CTIS system would work. What I have is that going out of there and actually into a ball cock first. And then it goes to, oh, I can get it up there. And then it goes to the regulator. The reason why I want to have that stopped uh, before it goes to the regulator is if something happened to the tire, it blew it out. Um, I actually want to have that manual so that I can pressure them up, pressure them down, whatever I want, and then turn it back off. So if anything happened to the uh, rear tires, some kind of leak formed, then I wouldn't actually start losing compressed air out of the brakes. Now I do have one more, one more um, ball cock to install, and that would be the one after the regulator. And uh, there's a reason for that, and I'll tell you in just a minute. And that takes us to the fitting that's on the far left. That is purely a supply line. And that supply line goes all the way back to the brake relay. Now I have just one supply, which is right here, goes into this lower relay. It also comes out here, loops around, and goes right back into this side of the upper relay. Okay, so both of these now have supply uh, air to them. What I've done here at the top is I have hooked up the service line coming from the truck 
goes all the way up and hooks into this component and that is the load sensing valve. When there is a load, you see this cable, which is attached to the axle. When there is a load, the bed actually will ride a little bit lower. And this, this lever here will actually go up with the more weight that is put into the vehicle. And what that does is it, it causes more air to go down this line and into right there into the brakes and cause the brakes to push a little bit harder or I guess to uh, make the brakes come on a little bit harder with the higher loads, which is a very good thing. The service line also has a T and that T goes all the way over into the upper brake relay, which also has the anti-compounding valve in it. To the right of the brake relays is the um, inversion valve, which I'll be removing, as well as the two-way check valve. I'll also be removing that part, which is the air brake protection valve, and that sends air back to what would normally be trailer air, back to the glad hands, but because I will never have a tandem trailer on this. I don't need it anymore. So those three components are going to be gone. All right, I think I'm done. Let's do some testing. All right, so while we're back here, I'm going to move that lever and see if we can't get this to air up a little bit. There we go, look at that. Nice. Boom, right up to 60, right where I want it. Okay, that is off. Can you hear that? That little depressurization is why I need to have that second lever to get rid of that because that is a feature that is on this vehicle. when you fail it's okay you actually learn a lot when you fail it's okay to fail but when you fail pick yourself up by your bootstraps if you have to I know that might be hard but you know what pick yourself up anyway do it again and do it right to the best of your ability I don't like to fail nobody likes to but you know what out of failure can come big success. <laughs> and I, I feel really good about the success I had today. Next video, we're gonna be doing some road tests with the trailer. <laughs> Until then, I'm Dave Anderson signing out. You guys be safe out there and God bless.